Today, we're going to be making a rich, comforting winter stew, two festive cocktails, and a fun DIY. But before we begin, I invite you to come into a quiet place. At Christmas time, we recreate the silent night in Bethlehem that happened so long ago that we may be lifted beyond our wee comprehension into the heavenly realm of all that is truly majestic and good. In the stillness of our soul, we can be humbled and amazed that we're not alone in this time and place. It's a silent invitation from the micro-temporal into the vast and wondrous heavenly place where our soul first felt its worth. Do you hear what I hear? A quiet child sleeping in the night who will bring us goodness and light. There's a silent tug on our hearts to let go of all that ails us and to be carried into a higher plane of laughter, lightness and joy. There's a silent thrill of hope where our weary world rejoices for the dawn to break a new and glorious morning. In the silence of falling snow and memories of old, may you find some peace in the simple tender things. Open your heart and look around and listen. Listen. May you hear the song within the silence See the beauty when there's nothing there. Sing the song within the silence where hope and love are everywhere. This is my December prayer. Today we're making an absolutely scrumptious ultimate beef stew. It's Ina Garten's recipe for modern comfort food. And um, it's definitely not, most likely not, the beef stew that you grew up on. It's halfway between a beef bourguignon. It has red wine and cognac, fennel. Mm. I'm starting with three pounds of short rib, boneless. And because I don't have four ounces of pancetta, we're going to begin with four ounces of just bacon browned. The oven is preheating at 300 degrees and we're going to start with the bacon, cutting the bacon. Okay, so this is going to cook for five to seven minutes. It's going to brown and then I'll remove it with a slotted spoon onto a paper towel and then we'll put in the short rib. But in the meantime, we're going to cut up the short rib. The first thing we're going to do is season with salt and pepper. both sides.
just removed the bacon with a slotted spoon, left all that wonderful rendered fat in there that is so delicious. And the heat goes up. And I'm gonna brown the beef in two batches. While that's browning, I'm gonna cut up two cups of chopped fennel. Let me show you how it's done. And then two cups chopped yellow onions. The thing is sometimes one onion is one cup, but these are huge onions. Sometimes one onion is two cups. The best way to measure is to chop and then to hold it in the palms of your hands. And that is something that Ina taught me. And that tends to be one cup. So let's see. This is half the onion. It looks like the one onion is two cups. All right, so the beef is out, the heat goes off, and then we're gonna deglaze all this beautiful um, renderings with a quarter cup of cognac. Ooh. And a third cup of Chianti, a table wine. And it just kind of cleans off the bottom of the pot and only for about a minute. Okay, then in goes the onions and the fennel. Seven to eight minutes. Okay, so I'm keeping my eye on the heat. Right now, I've turned it to a medium. We just want the onions and fennel to be translucent, but not brown. So while I'm, I'm keeping my eye on that, we're gonna peel the carrots. Next into the veg is two tablespoons of minced garlic. That's six big cloves. And I'll cook for about a minute. Meantime, I'm gonna measure the liquid ingredients. It's two thirds cup of Chianti. A can of um, chopped tomatoes in sauce. Here I have crushed tomatoes because that's what I had. wine
I'm gonna have to open a little more wine. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. And two cups of beef stock. And then a little bit of uh, salt and pepper. Two teaspoons of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. I'm gonna open that other wine, I'll be right back. New bottle of wine. The second third of a cup goes in. And then all the beautiful beef and their juices. And the bacon. So Ina has you put the bacon in at the second baking because this is going to bake in the oven twice. Um, but I've always made it this way on accident and it's wonderful. So you can decide how you want to do it. But Ina is always right. So go with her first. Okay, it's simmering away it's into the oven for an hour and 15 minutes at 300 degrees. Here is the tricky part of this beautiful stew that can be frozen. And that is what I'm gonna do today. I'm going to um, show you how I'm gonna take a portion of it for our dinner tonight. The rest will be frozen and this is what I do. So it's one pound of sliced diagonal carrots are going in with um, one pound of diced unpeeled scrubbed potatoes, and that's gonna bake for another hour. However, the portion that is going to be frozen, I'm not putting the potatoes in because when you freeze potatoes, they turn to mush. So I'm only putting in the amount of potatoes that we're going to extract for our dinner tonight. Also, after the second cooking, after that hour, 10 ounces of peas go in, frozen peas get stirred in along with a fresh um, cooked pancetta for a crispy finish, which I didn't do today. I don't have pancetta. I, I opted for the bacon. And, uh, and then it's a beautiful dish. While this is baking, I'm going to go ahead and cut the carrots and then the one potato that we'll extract for our dinner tonight. And I'm just going to Slices on a diagonal about half inch thick. So the potatoes are one inch diced. A little thicker than the carrots. It's all about cooking time. Something I like to have on hand all season long during the holidays is simple syrup and especially peppermint simple syrup. It makes fabulous drinks, whether they are um, with alcohol or they're just a, a mock um, cocktail. It doesn't matter. Let me show you how I make it. It's one equal parts, equal parts granulated sugar to water. It's one cup sugar, 
one cup water, medium low heat, keep an eye on it. It'll start to simmer and once it starts to boil, it's done. Then you take the heat off and then for the peppermint, once it's fully cooked, takes about five minutes, then it's a quarter teaspoon of um, peppermint extract. And then you have a simple syrup. So the syrup is golden and clear, and now it's just a quarter teaspoon of peppermint. Off the heat. And then into the refrigerator. This recipe is a white Christmas margarita and it tastes like Christmas and frosty and delicious. The secret ingredient is the um, canned coconut. This makes six drinks, six or seven drinks, depending on how strong you want them. And if you're making it for a crowd, then you'd put in the entire can, but I'm gonna cut this down to make two. So I'll show you how I do the, the measurements for two. And then I'll put um, in, the, in the description box below, I'll put the recipe for the six to seven. But we're gonna, we're gonna start with, um, so every drink is roughly one and a half to two ounces of alcohol. And here I'm gonna do two, uh, a quarter cup is two beverages. So I'm going to do a quarter cup of, of uh, silver tequila. And then of course you can add as much as you want or as little as you want or none at all. So quarter cup of that, a quarter cup equal parts coconut milk, canned, whoops, mess. So the Grand Marnier is one and a half ounces. I'm gonna fill this just part way. And then lots of ice and blend. And then, uh, oh, I forgot a little squeeze of lime. And then once it's properly blended, a little pinch of salt, I'm gonna rim the drink with sugar rather than salt. The second cocktail is wonderful because it can be made, made in a pitcher and then portioned out into a martini shaker um, as needed. And that's just the best thing for parties if you have like a signature drink. This is called peppermint froth and it's so good. And per, per drink is one and a half ounces of vodka proportion wise so one and a half ounces to one ounce of Kahlua Oops. and then half half of an ounce of, I already have cold um, peppermint simple syrup and it is cold and chilled. I like to put it in these milk bottles that you can get on Amazon. I'll, I'll post it in the description box or link it in the description box, but um, about a half ounce of the peppermint and then a half ounce of cream. that in there and then lots of ice and shaking
peppermint simple syrup stays in the fridge for all through the holidays. So it's wonderful to have on hand. It's very delicious in hot cocoa. It just kind of kicks it up a bit, uh, especially at Christmas time. And this um, peppermint froth martinis delicious along with the winter margarita. And let's give it a try. Oh, it's so good. Minty and fresh and warm and comforting, delicious. So the stew's been in for an hour and 15 minutes. And now we're just gonna stir in. Ooh, wow, the smell is fantastic. I'm gonna stir in. Mmm. The carrots, and then just our portion of potatoes that we will then pull out tonight when we have this for dinner. Just get this all mixed in. And then it's gonna cook for another hour. And then uh, last minute, in go the peas. And that's a beautiful dinner. This is the first time I've ever done this, but I went to the store and I couldn't find any garlands. I didn't have garlands yet. And I just decided, because we wanted to get this video out, you know, on the early side, that I purchased a fir, a Douglas fir tree for $59 and made my own garlands. And it was so much fun and very rewarding. And I just want to show you what I did. So when I did this the other day, I had a huge tarp and I, I filled all of my cuttings and I can't wait to show you, but this is how I like to decorate for Christmas, which is just so much greenery. And I can't wait to show you how I made my own. I think the most rewarding part about DIY is just, it's relaxing because you're, Kind of hyper focused on what you're doing and yet it's simple and it goes quickly and then you get the reward of um in the enjoyment so um let me show you how i tied it together with jute So this um, took under five minutes. It was so much fun, very rewarding. I made them in half moon shapes because that's what worked to put them on our chandeliers. And sometimes in two pieces and sometimes three, I left some of the jute on the end that, so I could tie them down on the chandeliers and uh, just so much fun. So um, hopefully, you may try it sometime. Oh my goodness, this stew, this beef bourguignon stew is so delicious. Something that Ina doesn't um, add, but I do, is a little bit of grated Parmigiano Reggiano, because with all that red wine and cognac and fennel, it's perfect. I can't wait to dig in. I've enjoyed so much sharing a little bit of the Christmas and holiday season with you. And I truly wish you a Merry Christmas and a wonderful, blessed holiday season.